Hi, my name is Nick and welcome to this short video on the basics of adult CPR. So let's start at the beginning. How do we tell if a patient is in cardiac arrest? Well, firstly, they don't look well. It may sound obvious, but a patient in cardiac arrest generally looks dead and this will be your first clue that progressing with your history taking may not be appropriate at this point. As you approach the patient, be aware of anything that may cause you harm. You shouldn't put yourself in undue risk to save somebody else. If they're in cardiac arrest, they will also be unresponsive. To check this, shake them by their shoulders and ask loudly right. if they're all right. Assuming they're unresponsive, then shout help for help and here, call an emergency buzzer if there is one. At best, they're unconscious, and at worst, they're dead. Either way, you don't want to be tackling this on your own. Open the airway with a head tilt chin lift, and whilst keeping it open, look for signs of life. Anything which might suggest to you that the patient isn't in cardiac arrest, such as normal breathing, a palpable carotid pulse, plus other more obvious clues such as coughing and movement. If there are no signs of life after 10 seconds, then we can assume that the patient is in cardiac arrest. But do be cautious of something called agonal breathing. It's not a sign of life. If you're unsure, assume they're in cardiac arrest. They'll soon tell you if they're not. So, the patient's in cardiac arrest. Send someone to call for the resus team. Give them nice, clear instructions. Can you call 2222 and tell them there's a cardiac arrest on whatever ward or department you're on and come back with a crash trolley when you've done that please. If you're ever on your own, leave the victim at this point and make the call yourself. Get the patient flat. If they're on a bed, pull the emergency CPR handle to flatten it. If they're in a chair, get them on the floor. If they're on the floor already, then great, recess them there. Start CPR with chest compressions by putting the heel of your hand in the centre of the patient's chest. Get your body weight over their middle and keep your elbows locked and straight. Use your body weight to compress rather than using force from your elbows. Compress down 5-6cm to six centimeters and allow the chest to recall fully without bouncing up and down on the patient's chest. We should spend an equal amount of time compressing as we do releasing. These compressions should be performed at a rate of 100-120 to 120 per minute. Judging the rate of compressions can be difficult, especially with a bucket load of adrenaline on board. If you compress to the beat of the BG staying alive, you won't go far wrong. Concentrate on good quality chest compressions with minimal interruptions. In clinical practice, we still deliver ventilations as the cause of the cardiac arrest in the hospital is often different from the cause in public. At the end of 30 chest compressions, we should ideally deliver two ventilations. However, the recess trolley with the ventilatory device we use called a bag valve mask is unlikely to have arrived at this point to deliver them with. If a pocket mask is to hand, then use that. Otherwise, continue with chest compressions until a bag valve mask is available and connected to oxygen. Mastering the bag valve mask isn't as easy as experts make it look, and those of you who are not experts should use a two-person technique. The first person holds the mask in place with both hands, creating a seal by putting the face into the mask and opening the airway, whilst the second delivers the two breaths, each over approximately one second, looking for the chest to rise with each breath. If the chest doesn't rise during ventilations, then return to chest compressions and try readjusting your technique for the next attempt, or consider that the airway may be obstructed. An airway adjunct should ideally be used in conjunction with the bag valve mask as soon as possible. Once the ventilations have been attempted, then return to chest compressions and continue with CPR at 30 compressions to 2 ventilations until the defibrillator is attached to the patient or the patient shows obvious signs of life. If you get stuck, fall back on doctors A, B, C, D. Danger. Response. Shout for help. Open airway, look for breathing and other signs of life, start CPR at 30 to 2, attach the defibrillator as soon as possible. Thank you very much for listening.